Today, we talk about... So you've come to the mash day. <laughs> Spike! Uh, I'm the wrong person to be asking about this. I'll just be very upfront about it. I did not do well on my first two steps, which are arguably the most important ones. I did do great on my third one, but by then, was it too late? Not really, because I ended up doing what I wanted to do, but I got it. So, uh, I can hopefully help you learn from uh, my mistakes. And my mistake was just not taking medical school seriously. I think at the very least, if you take it seriously and don't wait till after medical school to take your medical education seriously, uh, so better late than never in my case, and I ended up doing just fine. But, um, but if I were to do it all again, my recommendations would be, first of all, I did not put enough lack of faith in medical schooling. Uh, so if that's confusing, what I'm trying to say is I expected to be spoon fed information the way I had been my whole life for, for school. And you realize very quickly and, and very uh, appropriately that, uh, this is a very self-taught thing. I mean, you really should stop looking at medical school as like you giving them money to teach you. And you should start looking at more like you're giving them money so that you can show you're qualified to get a nice little piece of paper at the end. That's the way you really should be looking at it. Uh, cause medical education for med medical educators is very lackluster in my opinion as far as like how you can really optimize your medical knowledge uh in my experience a lot of the awesome medical uh content and knowledge base i gained was not from medical school but from almost entirely outside sources we're talking youtube so many great medical instructors on youtube for free uh dr najib comes to mind he was fantastic oh my god man uh, you know, not only his free YouTube videos, but his paid program videos, the amount of detail he goes into with, and, and his style with personalizing little stick figures and, and really just super and, you know, emphasizing certain aspects, you know, to, to finally make the nephron make sense, for example, like it was so unbelievably useful. So I highly recommend Dr. Najib. Um, Another great resource is the Kaplan videos. The Kaplan videos were great overall, especially in the step two, step three realm, because they start to help you think clinically and not just by the textbook. Because when you're just reading something off a textbook or off a slide, you have to add the animation and the, and the uh, you have to bring it to life as far as knowledge that you can consume. But luckily with those Kaplan videos and Dr. Fisher, I believe his name was, they he animates it in such not physical animation but like he he's animated and enthusiastic and delivers in a clinician's perspective in a very enthusiastic way which goes a long way to preparing well for a standardized test like this um another one is uh golion or golgen uh if you can get a hold of those bootlegged um uh, lecture series that someone recorded with semi-poor audio quality, uh, those are just phenomenal. What I would do is listen to them like you would any podcast these days. Get your headphones in while you're working out. Uh, if you have a long commute to school, uh, med school in my case, or whatever, pop those puppies in and just listen to those. Listen to them at least two to three times because I've picked up new things from them each and every single time I listen to them. And you have the time to listen to it. It will reinforce all the things you're reading about separately. Um, I had heard good things about Pathoma, but I had never had any personal experience with Pathoma. So I can't really speak to Pathoma personally, but I can only imagine if a lot of people are talking about how good it is and the fact that it's not standard medical school <laughs> uh, educational material, it's probably good. And I'd hate to throw shade at all these medical educators, but you just have to put it in context. Like you're being educated by these PhDs who have no vested interest in your step scores. Um, and they're really not teaching to the steps. They're teaching their curriculum that was probably okayed by the medical school, but what the fuck do they know really either? Um, uh, and again, with all due respect, like when was the last time they took the step exams? When was the last time they, you know, had any idea? And, and they, especially the older dinosaur administrators, they come from a world where the step scores were either A, not that important from what they describe, or the standards were so much lower that like, it really just doesn't even hold a candle. I don't think they even understand the gravity of of how well you have to do on these exams with how competitive things are and how saturated it is with doctors trying to do all these very specific specialties, especially if you're especially trying to do a very competitive specialty. It's it's very paramount. You do well on this fucking test or you won't show up on anyone's radar on any of these um, uh, uh, residency application piles. You know, you, you will just reach a threshold and your your application will be tossed out. You won't even be looked at twice and you might be a fantastic person. Um, 
so yeah, just take those resources seriously and try to prioritize those over your own um, like uh, theme scores, you know, within your actual curriculum. Because I feel like you would do just as well on those exams if you studied for the boards and not for those exams. I think, unfortunately, to some extent, some of these places still do their own in-house exams as opposed to like the standardized online exams, which I hope to God that you're taking those, I forget the name of them. Um, what, what would they call them? Uh, there was shelf exams, but then there was also the kind of exams in the first two years of medical school. The shelf exams are in your third and fourth year, I believe, but the shelf version of exams in the first and second year that are like standardized tests that they qualify for the in-house score for each theme. Uh, you know, if the, that you're more likely to do well if you're studying for the actual boards and those resources. So I would definitely prioritize those over any in-house material because the in-house material is usually trash. I'll just say it. I mean, I could give you countless examples of slide decks that these professors would give us and they were just like, what the fuck are we looking at right now? And maybe that's just the way I looked at it because I literally would only study for each six week theme two to three nights before every exam, just pulling constant all-nighters, which was super unhealthy, super stupid. Who knows how much of that I retained to begin with. I was not doing well on those exams. I can't believe I passed every one of them. Uh, just, you know, it's just not real. But yeah, again, don't use me as an example. <laughs> it's not a good idea. Uh, but yeah, that's what I would do differently if I were to go back. I would take those, and then of course, first aid, duh. You know, the hardest thing about med school, man, is not the content, it's just sitting down and fucking putting in the hours because no one else is going to do it for you. No one's clocking in and out for you. You know, no one's paying you, you're paying them. And it's just like, you're probably at this stage in your life where you're wondering, especially depending on how old you are, you know, did I make the right decision, you know, while the rest of my friends are off doing, you know, college things, grad school things, having fun, taking years off, uh, working jobs that are already, you know, progressing in their careers. And then the other end of the token, if you're older coming to medical school and you're like, oh shit, I already had this whole career-ish and then now I left it, now I'm in medical school, did I do the right thing? This shit sucks, da 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 So it's like a lot of like internal struggle you're going to have to deal with more so than the actual content itself, but... Yeah, and I hope that answered your question. But uh, <laughs> in any event, uh, see you next time. We out. Bye.